Hi everyone. This is Alice from Cleverly Accounting. If you are doing business in Australia, you are probably familiar with the term GST. But if you don't know much about it, don't worry, this video is for you. In today's video, I'd like to share with you some basic knowledge about GST. The GST or Goods and Services Tax commenced in Australia on 1 July 2000 and is a broad-based single-rate indirect tax charged at the rate of 10%. First, who pays GST? The end user in the commercial chain of transactions is the party that ultimately incurs the tax as a cost. For example, if you sell a product for a price of $110 including GST of $10, you generate a revenue of $100, and the $10 GST needs to be remitted to the ATO. So effectively, it is the final consumers that pay GST. Who needs to register for GST? An entity is required to register for GST if it carries on an enterprise, and its GST turnover meets, or exceeds the registration turnover threshold. The turnover threshold is currently set at $150,000 per annum for non-profit bodies, and $75,000 per annum for all other entities. However, registration is compulsory, regardless of the level of turnover, for entities that provide taxi or ride sourcing services such as Uber, Didi. When to charge GST and when not to. There are three types of sales for GST purposes, taxable sales 10%, GST-free sales 0%, and input tax sales. Most products and services sold or consumed in Australia are subject to 10% GST. GST-free supplies are not liable to GST. This means that the final supplier does not pay GST to the ATO on their supplies, but they are entitled to claim an input tax credit for the GST component of their costs. The most common GST-free supplies are Most basic fresh food some medical services, exports, international transport, water, sewerage and drainage, farming land. Input tax supplies are not subject to GST, and no input tax credit can be claimed for anything acquired to produce these supplies. Input tax supplies mostly cover financial supplies, the supply of residential rent, and the supply of residential property that is not new. Tax invoices A supplier must provide a valid tax invoice if the supply is for a price exceeding $82.50 including GST and the purchaser requests it. Where the price of the supply is $1,000 including GST or more, the tax invoice must include the buyer's identity or ABN. Normally tax invoices are issued by the supplier, but in some cases, the recipient can create the tax invoice. This is known as a Recipient Created Tax Invoice, or RCTI. Secondhand Goods If you are a GST-registered business acquiring secondhand goods from an individual not registered for GST, for example, then you can still claim input tax credits provided the goods are acquired for resale not for manufacture. Withholding GST on Purchase of New Residential Property From the 1st of July 2018, the purchaser of new residential property or potential residential land is required to withhold GST from the purchase price, 111th of the purchase price, and remit it to the ATO. This does not apply to the deposit and is only necessary for the first installment after the deposit. GST Reporting Most SMEs report GST quarterly. A monthly tax period is only applicable to entities with a GST turnover of at least $20 million. An SBE entity that meets certain conditions can choose to use either the cash basis or accruals methods of accounting for GST. All other entities must account for the GST using the accrual basis. Under the cash basis, the taxpayer only accounts for GST on actual cash payments received and made during that period regardless of when the goods or services are provided, or an invoice is received. Under the accrual basis, the total GST is attributed to the earlier of the tax period in which the invoice was issued or the period of the first receipt from the sale. 
For example, if the purchaser pays an installment of $110 in the current tax period, period 1, to purchase a desk for $1,100, but the invoice was issued for $1,100 in the next GST period, period 2, then all the $100 of GST is attributed to period 1 and not period 2 when the invoice is issued. So we have covered some fundamental knowledge about the GST in this video. I hope you've gained some valuable insights into the GST, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.